YouTube channel, I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, guys, then thank you so much for coming back. Sorry about the little jumping into your lives at the beginning of the video. Basically, my house is a complete mess. And it's been snow day today, so we've been playing with the kids in the snow. So this video is a little bit later. I've got you on a ring light stand, which is further than I can reach. So <laughs> to start, I should get one of them little um, buttons. I think it did come with a button, actually. I've just not set it up to it. So grab yourselves a nice cup of tea and some snacks. Mine is obviously, this is a Valentine's thing video. So mine's in my Roro mug from Emma Bridgewater, because of my close friends and family, that's my nickname. And uh, especially Gary. So I've got my little hearts on it and I've got a lemon tea in here. No, that is good. So today's video is homemade gifts. Now, they're all DIY, they're really, really cheap. Some of them can even be done for free. And I thought they'd be really good ideas for Valentine's gifts, people, and crafts just to make anyway. But also, we're gonna be doing some food type ones. We're gonna be doing some candles like decor. Let's do flowers, personalized gifts. And um, yeah, these can always be used throughout the year, not just for Valentine's Day, but I thought it'd be a fun video to make. So the first thing I'm going to show you is, oh, and I've got to say happy birthday to Helen Stockford. Your lovely daughter Evie asked if I'd give you a little shout out, happy birthday. Happy birthday, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. So Gary's being my little extra cute guy coming in and he's bringing in the wax for me. So I've been burning some wax to make some candles. So I picked up these lovely little ramekins from the pound shop. Now you get a pack of three of these for a pound. I got these last year, but they're in there again this year. They're very similar to the La Crusite ones that you can get. Um, and yes, I've got three. And what I thought these would be really good for. Now, obviously you could make anything in these type food, but I thought because they're safe for the oven, they'd be really good for making little candles. And because they're heart shaped, I thought they'd be really lovely gifts. So we're going to show you now how we're going to burn down the wax and I'm going to show you how we're going to get on. Well, I will just say, excuse the mess, we're currently in the middle of having work done. So as much as I try and clean my hob, there's dust everywhere. Um, so what I've done is I've just got a saucepan and I've boiled some water from the kettle and I've just put it inside the saucepan and I've just put this little, they, they call it a bad Maria, I believe. I bought this from Amazon, I'll probably link this below. And I'm just heating it up, not boiling it too high, it's on a really, really low heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some of the soy wax. So this I also purchased from Amazon as well. And I'm just going to place a little bit in there and wax a small amount at a time. This is going to be a little bit difficult with one hand. Let's see if I can do it. We just need enough really for one candle, don't we? And then what I'm going to do is, is you can use a lollipop stick to stir this with. I have got an old spoon. I'm going to have to actually ask Gary while I'm filming. Gary, I've got a spoon on the table. Would you grab it for me? Um, so you, as you can see, it does start to melt straight away. And what you're just going to do is you're just going to keep stirring this until it's liquidised down to a liquid. Now at this point, once it starts to, once you've boiled it and then it's left, you can obviously add a few essential oils to this. You can add some like um, dried petals and leaves to this just to give it a little bit extra scent or a beautiful look, some light colorings into this. You can buy all of these things from Amazon. I'm sure if you type it in, you will find it quite cheaply. Um, but I'm gonna be leaving them white, I think because the ramekins are already red heart shades. I think a nice clean wax is just nice. I'm not gonna do it scented. And I just think there's something nice to light up if you're having a romantic evening, as well as obviously a gift in itself. So, and this is also how I would do these for wax melts. So I wax, um, melt the wax down, add a few drops of essential oils, whatever scent you're using, um, and then you can obviously put them into smaller moulds and make some wax melts. So I'm just gonna burn this down until it's completely. So now the wax is actually melted. This is the consistency it should look like. We're not gonna let it boil, but this is very, very runny, and it will stay like this for quite a while. Obviously, be in mind that you're going to need to use a container to make the candles in something that is heat proof. The ramekins from the pound shop would be absolutely fine because they are designed to go into the oven, so I know that they'll be fine, but I wouldn't recommend putting these in things that obviously aren't ready because they could just smash, which would be dangerous. So now I'm just going to go in there, and you'll see me pouring them, getting the candles ready. So I've got my wax, as you can see, I've melted it all up. Gary's brought it in for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to need some wicks. So you can use a lolly stick to keep these in place if you want to, but what I tend to do is straighten them up. I'm using a shorter wick. They are quite long, but obviously you cut them down to size after. My wax is really, really hot in my little bamboo. I'm just gonna pour the tiniest amount of wax into the bottom. And what this will do is it will just be like a glue, basically. And we're gonna hold the wick 
in the center of where we want the candle. And we're just gonna hold it for a few seconds just while it sticks as the wax starts to set. And then what we're gonna do is once that is slightly set, it starts to go really white. Just gonna be really careful and we're gonna pour the wax into the candle up to where we want it. Obviously, don't do it all the way to the very top. Probably about two thirds of the way up. And then what we can do is use like a lolly stick or something to hold this in place. This is going to be set in whilst we do some other crafts. And obviously at the end, we can come back to this and I'll show you. I'm just going to get little piece of plastic you can get do you know what I should have used I've got some toothpicks that long chopsticks you can wrap it round it and then just set it on the top but I'm just going to set it on the top and then just move it as it's set in so I'm just going to put that to the side so as we go along we'll see that so the next thing I've melted is so I'll show you the end of the it's a really good idea look Gary's in he's my little chocolate man <laughs> he's brought in the chocolate so now I'm going to show you how I've melted that as well, very similar to the candle wax, and then we're going to show you some chocolate treats. So for the chocolate eggs we're going to be making, and the little chocolate treats, I've just got a bar of Galaxy, um, so I've got this smooth Galaxy milk, and I've got two bars of this, I've broken it up really small, stuck it inside a homemade bain-marie. Now usually we use a glass heat proof bowl on top of a boiling water, obviously filled two thirds of the way up, same sort of thing that I've done with the... Um, a wax melt burner but I haven't got one of those so I'm using one of these that can stand the heat I wouldn't just put a normal glass in here it's one of those Fermos glasses um, jugs and I've got a different spoon and I've just broke it down into smaller pieces and I'm just stirring it and melting the chocolate and it all oh, looks so delicious I can't stand this sort of stuff I just want to eat it as is and I'm going to melt this down yet again like the wax until it's completely runny and gooey ready to make our little desserts so now the chocolate is melted I picked up from the range, so these come in a pack of four little heart shaped molds, and these were a pound from the range. I'm pretty sure you can get these on Amazon. I'll go and have a little look on Amazon, see if I can find some, and if I can, I'll get a little link down there so that you can purchase them online. But what I thought would be a really nice idea is if we could make some homemade little chocolate treats for someone. So I'm going to get the little bun Marie out, which is quite hot. Obviously, prepare your table if you don't want it to mark them. Mine needs a good sand, so it's fine. Um, and what I've got is I've got a box of Rice Krispies. You can use any cereal. Maybe some crushed up cornflakes would be really nice. And I've just got some pink and white marshmallows from Tesco's. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt the chocolate. And I'm going to do two different ideas. So the first idea is I'm going to pop... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't waste chocolate. It just can't be done. So what I'm going to do the first idea is I'm just going to pour some of the chocolate into the heart shape, around the rim, and I'm going to try to sort of move it round so it coats the whole outside of the heart shape, just by twisting it. You might need more chocolate, I do apologise for more chocolate is now. If I see a chocolate or a cake spoon, there is no way on earth that I'm not having it. So I'm just twisting it around. As you can see, it's starting to coat the whole bottom. You see that it just starts to drip and completely coat it. I am going to need a tiny bit more chocolate in there. Why not? Now, these, what happens is, is once you leave this to set, it will turn into a nice shell. So turn into like an Easter egg. Now you're going to need two of these. Obviously, if you only have one mould, then you can just do one at a time. If you fill two moulds up and do exactly the same, once they dry and you pop them out, you're going to end up with a hollow shell. So with a tiny bit of melted chocolate, rub it around the edge of the shell that you have. And you can pop in some sweets, some marshmallows, candies, whatever they like, a little note. And then you pop the two together. Obviously, once you've popped them out of the plastic together, and then you can put them in nice cellophane. It basically creates an Easter egg in a heart shape that it can be really personalised for the other person. But what I'm going to do is, that's just a little idea, but the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the Rice Krispies. I'm going to make some Rice Krispie cakes in heart shape with marshmallows because I know I'm not going to be wasting any of these items. 
and I know my kids absolutely love these. I probably will get told off by the packet police. Why have you not opened that packet correctly if I don't? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be pouring in some Rice Krispies into the chocolate, adding a little piece at a time to get the right sort of consistency. I'm going to grab a clean spoon as well. I won't, I won't be that naughty one that sticks in the spoon that I've licked. <laughs> I'm going to grab a spoon, guys. I'm going to grab a spoon. I basically pick your cat. Mum, grab the spoon! <laughs> so then I'm just going to mix it all in into the chocolate. Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. Anything to do with chocolate. I love it. I'm going to be doing, I do like to bake and make little treats and stuff. And I do do a lot of meal prep. And I do do a lot of like batch cooking. So once the kitchen is actually fitted, I probably would do a few more eating videos. <laughs> Me looking more spoons, guys. Um, so we're just getting a really nice consistency. So we want to coat the Rice Krispies. Obviously, if you haven't made a Rice Krispie cake, like, you know, then you might find this interesting, but a lot of you probably shout at me like, Rosie, we know how to make a Rice Krispie cake. But it's just an idea to make something homemade. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that to dry, that shell, and I'm probably gonna make a little Easter egg type heart. I'm just gonna take the other mold, and I'm just gonna pop in a few spoonfuls, so you can see what I'm doing, of the Rice Krispie mix. These are really cheap, like you can go out and buy people boxes of chocolates and stuff. But these are really good to pack the kids as well, like little treats for the kids. If you're doing them like a little Valentine's bag or your partner, who doesn't love chocolate? And then what we can do is add a few marshmallows. These are some those. I know I don't open these correctly, guys, but I have containers in my like pantry area. I have all of mine in like con containers, so it don't really matter how I open it. It's only going to be popped in the recycling anyway. I'm going to pop in a few marshmallows and then what I would do on top is perhaps melt some white chocolate and drizzle it but I'm just going to use some of this chocolate because I forgot to save some from the actual mix. <laughs> Nothing you get from me is professional but it's fine because hopefully you don't mind. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of the chocolate on. Nice pattern to make sure that it holds down the marshmallows and then pop these in the fridge. Once they are set, I, I'm going to pop these in the fridge now and let them cool and then I've got to pop them in the fridge. And at the end, I'll show you what they come out like. And you can wrap these in little cellophane bags. You get some nice boxes. Obviously, you line it with some like parchment paper. And then, yeah, like baking paper. And then you just made some homemade little treats for someone. So the candle is setting. It's still not set in the background. So I'm going to move these to the side. I don't want to be wasteful, though. I don't want this to set in a jar. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to fill the other one really quick. Three children, they're all going to want one, so I have to use my finger instead of my thingy spoon, don't worry, I have washed my hands, and then I'm just going to use the last one, they're not going to care about the chocolate sauce, I'll pop them all in, because I know that I chat so much, I'll end up being on here, and then they'll all start to set, so I've got a little bit of washing up to do now, so they're popped in like that, all Rice Krispies, I'm going to pop a few <laughs> with a clean hand, a few marshmallows on the top for them. And I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to come back. So now I've washed my hands and I'm back <laughs> to apologise. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, obviously, with the wax candles, you can do them as wax melts. I did pick these up for $1.99 in the range, so these are Mason and Cash. And they are silicone heart trays, which you can easily put the wax on. Obviously, do the same process as what we did with the wax, and you choose these. Or you could make little chocolate treats rather than gigantic chocolate treats by using these. So I just wanted to let you know that you can get these. They also sell on Amazon melt and pour soaps. So you could make like little individual soaps by adding some essential oils, and yeah, you could pop these in them and make little individual soaps. You know, once life resumes, you can be really posh and make little individual soaps when people come stay over at your house and give them a little individual soap. So I just thought I'd show you these because they're in lovely little heart shape. Don't think I'm ever going to be getting them back in the box. If you can't be bothered to buy soy wax and loaf and it's just like a little tiny craft that you want to try. In the pound shop, they always sell these Yankee Candle wax melts. 
Do you have a pound in there? And you can also pick up a few of these from Home Bargains, like the little ones. You can just melt these down the same way as what I've done with the wax and then pour them into there to make your own wax melt. So you're buying big in bulk if you don't want to. And it's just a quick craft for you to try and it's only a couple of pounds then, isn't it? It does work out cheaper in the long run to buy the big packet of wax, but obviously, like I say, if it's just a one-off, then it works out better to do that way. So next thing I'm gonna make is quite a personal craft. So we're gonna be making heart photo magnets. Now these are really good to get the kids involved to make as well, because I think they'd be finding really fun. So I don't tend to like loads and loads of stuff all over my fridge. I think it looks a little bit scrappy and I'm a little bit OCD like that. I thought this might be quite a nice idea, especially, you know, if someone's got a fridge at work or, you know, you can always find somewhere to put a magnet. So in the range, they sell a packet of two of these, and the little top of the packet look like this. So two big packets of photo magnets. Now, these were a pound in there, which I thought was really, really good. Yet again, I'll go on Amazon and see if they have similar. But you get two sheets of magnets, but they have a sticky back on them. So my idea was getting a photograph of me and Gary, obviously just pick whatever photo of it be of your children, of your loved ones. I'm gonna get a pen. So I'm gonna get a pen, I'm not really organized. I'm gonna get a pen. And I'm just gonna use one of the heart-shaped ramekins. Now, a cookie cutter will do with this. In the pound shop, they sell sets of cookie cutters with heart shapes. I know a lot of supermarkets do it. Or if you want to do it freehand, you think you're quite nifty at a heart shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop it onto the photo, the area that I want to actually have as the heart. I'm gonna put it over our heads. <laughs> and I'm just gonna draw around the heart shape. So obviously, if you are using a cookie cutter, then you can do that. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to cut, not round the heart first, I'm just going to cut roughly round it, not perfectly, just because we're going to stick it to our magnet. I don't want to, if we left the whole photo, you're going to waste a large pink part of the magnet. I'm going to pop that to the side and we're left with a tiny part of the photograph. So I'm just going to peel, start peeling off. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to roughly place the heart and I'm going to cut out as much magnet as I'm going to need. So you will have a little bit excess waste, but it just saves a lot of waste. So now I've got a smaller piece. I'm going to peel off the sticky back off of the magnet. And I'm going to firmly stick the photo side up onto the sticky. So the back of the photo is going onto the stickiness and then obviously the shiny bit of the magnet will be on the back. I'm going to press it down really hard Give it a good rub, make sure that it's all in place and it's not going to come off. And then with a nice sharp pair of scissors, I'm just gonna cut around the heart shape outline. Really nice and slowly. This is such a cheap way as well to sort of like, these are really good for grandparents to make even at Christmas time or as gifts or Mother's Day, do these for your mum. Really, really simple. So, so nice to make. And then we end up with a little personalised heart-shaped magnet. It can go on your fridge, it's perfect. You can get pictures printed off for as cheap as 20p a picture in Asters and places like that, straight off your phone. But if you've got photo albums and you just want a nice picture on your fridge out rather than in the photo frame, they're lovely. They stick to it on the See what, I think I've got metal part from the saucepan I use, see? Hey! <laughs> and then you can stick this to the fridge. But you could even do this with pictures that the children have drawn, or anything like that, and then cut them out into a heart shape, or any shape you desire. You could do it with Easter ones in shapes of eggs if you wanted to, and Christmas, and do bells, and reindeers, whatever you want, cut them into the shape. It's really nice, they're gonna stick to the fridge, and it's a personalized magnet. Really cheap, you get two big sheets of this. You could easily make about eight magnets for the price of a pound and obviously whatever if you've already got the photographs. So I thought that was a really cool idea. So the wax is still not completely set, but we can sort of like sort our wick out a little bit now, straighten it up slightly and just add a tiny bit more wax where the wick has been laying. You won't have to do this if you set it up straight to start with, but we all know I'm not that professional. So now that should stay up and we'll trim that down after. So now the next thing I'm going to be making is a floral arrangement. So I will link a video below in the description box because I did do these with fresh flowers. So if you want to see how I've done them with fresh flowers, um, then you can and obviously it pre preserves the box that we've done it in. Now what we're going to need for this is some kind of vase or jug or pot or box. 
Um, you can use these gift boxes they do in the pound shop. This is actually a Christmas one, come with a Christmas lid. But I'm just gonna get rid of the lid, but you know, you can pop it underneath. No one's gonna know it's got a Christmas lid anyway to give it that effect. Um, but what I'm gonna be using today, also I do these in heart shapes. I did buy one specifically for this video, and I don't know where I put it. Um, so obviously I'm not going out unless it's essential only. So I'm going to use this. Now these are £2.49 from Home Bargains, these heart shaped baskets. But they have got some in the pound shop for £2 in the £2 section. Um, so these are really nice. You can reuse these after. If you want to do a wet floral arrangement like with fresh flowers, you are going to need to put some kind of carry bag in this. Some like black bin liner, something that's waterproof that's not going to damage the basket before you put your oasis in. Also, I wanted to know the oasis that I've got, the green one, this is normally one that you would wet for a fresh floral arrangement and you'd use the grey one for dry flowers that aren't real or artificial. But obviously I'm not going out unless it's essential. This is the only thing I had at home, but it still will work. So I'm just going to cut open my phone block. These are like 99p in home bargains and you can obviously get these on Amazon and online anyway. I just think they might work out cheaper from home bargains. So all I'm going to do, well that's a bit of not very nice noise, is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my phone block where normally you would sort of like cut these with a knife. Please don't do this at home because I know I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm going to use the scissors to cut the block. <laughs> I get in trouble sometimes on here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it roughly to the shape, making sure that obviously the foam doesn't come up higher than the actual basket itself. I'm quite good at just cutting this by eye now. I've made so many floral arrangements and like I say, I've had got a video where I can I'll put it in the description box if you want to go and watch that. And then it hasn't got to be perfect, guys. We're going to just cut a smaller square. This is the kind of noise that makes two solid. I am going to be doing a video tomorrow which is like home decor crafts. I feel like I'm right on the craft thing now. I haven't done one in ages. I'm just going to do a tiny little etch there. Don't need to fill it too much, but obviously we want to make sure that we get them all round the edges. So it's roughly filled, doesn't have to be perfect will be easier if you've got a square shape, but we're going for a heart shape because it's Valentine's. And also in the pound shop, they do these bunches of roses. Now, disclaimer, the ones from the pound shop are slightly smaller. You don't get as many stems on them, so you could just buy more of them. But in Home Bargains, these were two pounds, so I thought I'll just get these instead. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut off all the roses to roughly, I use that, my wick, oh well, roughly this sort of length. I'm just gonna get my scissors. Because another thing I didn't have, I'm not prepared, <laughs> was my little snips. Everything's in my shed at the moment, and I can't get to it. Once the kitchen's done and everything's back organised, so I'm just going to bend them away like that. I'm going to get them to about this length. I'm going to quickly do it. I don't want to bore you while I'm doing this. <laughs> but, you know, some things have got to be done, and because I put them away somewhere, I've got to go the long way about it. I do apologise, guys. I do find lately I'm doing the long, the long way about everything at the moment. Ooh. This one I'm going to keep the fawn on. I don't, oh, I don't know, actually. If you can keep the fawns on, you can cut the fawns down as well if you want to, to make it look a bit more realistic. I think by using this rustic sort of like basket, I think it looks very country, like rustic love. You could have these as like little wedding centrepieces if you wanted to, if you're doing like a cheap little homemade type shabby sheep wedding. Do these obviously on the ground as scale if you wanted to. Do you know what would look really, really nice? Some real red roses, lining it with some plastic and then doing the real oasis in like black top hats. I don't know why, but I think that would look really cute. Or if you play instruments, you could do it coming out of a guitar, the middle of a guitar. I get a bit carried away my ideas. <laughs> So I've cut down all my roses. I do have some left over from last year from the range, and they are more of a deep, deep red, a little bit more luscious, but we'll see if we need them. I think we've done, I think we've got enough roses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start popping these through the oasis, spreading them nicely, popping them down, so they're kind of touching the base, but not, so you've got a tiny little bit of space there. Otherwise, they looked a little bit crammed in. And I'm just going to space them nicely, not all crushed up together. We've got a nice bit of space between them, and you can actually see the roses themselves. 
I do think having a few other forms on is actually really nice. Make sure we go more to the side so we cover up so we don't end up with no gaps. Might be easier to go around the edge first. And I mean, this is like five pound. I mean, they're gonna last forever. It looks much nicer than, you know, just going to a garage and just buying a random bunch of flowers. Shows that you put a little bit of effort in. I am gonna use a few of these stems and just pop them in around the edge because I think they look really nice actually. I wasn't sure how I was feeling about it. <laughs> I think they make them look a bit nicer, so I'm just gonna pop them around the edge into the oasis. And then I'm just gonna pop this one here. So as you can see, we're going around and we're filling it up beautifully. And then I might have to take that one out because it's not really showing the heart shape. So I'll show you what I mean. It was there. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to pop it down a little bit further into the bunch so that we can still maintain the heart shape. I'm going to pop this one here, kind of central to the side. And then I'm going to mimic that one, pop that in there. And it makes a beautiful heart shape. You can add different colours of these if you want, maybe pink if you're not going for like the full on red colour. How beautiful is this little rose basket? It's so pretty. It's so cheap to make, especially if you've already got these kind of baskets. I know so many of you on Instagram have them already. So £2 for the basket and £2 for the flowers. So that's a £4 gift. And that doesn't look like... The type of flowers that you can only get for £4 won't ever look half as nice as this. And um, Obviously, my candle has set now. So I'm just going to cut the wick down. We're not going to cut it too short. Maybe a bit short than that, but just for the purposes that you can see. We can fill up all of these if we wanted. We could do a nice big gift hamper. So if you bought these from the pound shop and you just melt it down, even just a candle, like a pillar candle you can melt down um, and make these, you probably could make all of these three candles for two pound if you wanted to. Um, the pillar candle for a pound from there and obviously the ramekins, three for a pound. This is made for four pounds. So for five pounds, you can make a few candles and a lovely heart-shaped floral arrangement. Obviously, really, really cheaply made little homemade magnets. You could probably pop this in there if you're making a little hamper. It'd be really, really cute. And then you can obviously keep that on the fridge afterwards. And then with these, you can obviously just get nice cellophane. They're not, they're not completely set yet, but they're going to look delicious. They're just going to look so cute once they're out. They're just going to be lovely little heart-shaped Rice Krispie cakes. And they're just going to look lovely. Wrap them in cellophane, maybe a little bit of red ribbon around the top. And they're just homemade gifts. They're lovely to make. It's not nice for something to do. But obviously, I'm doing it in a heart shape. You could do this any time of the year for gifts. You could get some nice little pink um, plant and things to make your little candles in. You could do different coloured flowers for Mother's Day, something like that. You could perhaps do them in a different type Easter basket and use daffodils. These sort of gifts are really nice to make. And I know that I much prefer to have something that's made for me than something that's just shop bought. I think it's just a lot more thought goes into it. And I know that a lot of these things would be easy for the kids to make, including the little magnets and the little chocolate rice crispy cakes. It'd be something to do during the holidays. I'm saying the holidays because otherwise it would send me mad knowing that it's actually forced upon me. It's the holidays, guys. <laughs> um, and it just gives them something to do. So I've been Rosie Henshaw. Hopefully you've enjoyed this craft. If you want to see some decor pieces for uh, Valentine's Day, then don't forget to come around and stick around tomorrow. But take care, and I hope you've had a lovely birthday, Helen, as well. Take care. Bye!